गुड मॉर्निंग एचओडी प्रोफेसर एके चतुर्वेदी सर माय सेमिनार गाइड डीपी शर्मा सर फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एग्जामिनर्स एंड माय फाइनल ईयर ब्रांच बैचमेंट्स आई एम मोहम्मद आसिफ अली करंटली परस्यू माय बैचलर्स डिग्री इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट्स राजस्थान टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी कोटा टुडे आई एम प्लीज्ड टू बी हियर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू ऑल टू डिलीवर द प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ माय सेमिनार टॉपिक फंडामेंटल्स एंड डिजाइन एनालिसिस ऑफ हीट एक्सचेंजर्स अ हीट एक्सचेंजर इज अ डिवाइस that is used to transfer thermal energy in the tube between two or more fluids between a solid surface and a fluid or between solid particulates and fluid at different temperatures and in thermal contact in heat exchangers there are usually no external heat and work interactions the heat exchanger is an industrial device we want to get best out of it that means spending small amount of time spending small amount of power spending small amount of space we want to have more capacity from the heat exchanger and as told that heat transfer is the key mechanism or key phenomena occurring in a heat exchanger now coming to the objectives or applications of heat exchangers typical applications involve heating or cooling of a fluid stream of concern and evaporation or condensation of a single or multi component of fluid stream in other applications the objective may be to recover or reject the heat or sterilize pasteurize fractionate distill concentrate crystallize or control the process flow heat exchangers are extensively used in diverse industries covering power generation refrigeration and air conditioning cryogenics oil refineries and chemical processes automobiles and other transport devices the performance of a heat exchanger is very important for the conservation of energy assurance of product quality process viability and environmental protection accordingly the application of heat exchangers can be identified into three broad categories industrial health services and in domestic field in each of these categories again different types of heat exchangers may be used in general heat exchangers have been classified according to the construction of a heat exchanger their compactness flow arrangements such as parallel flow counter flow and cross flow heat exchangers pass arrangements phase of the process fluids and heat transfer mechanisms now coming to the first criteria of the classification which is according to the base of construction according to the construction details heat exchangers are classified as tubular heat exchangers which include double pipe shell and tube boiler tube heat exchangers next one is plate type heat exchangers third one are the extended surface heat exchangers like tube pin or plate pin heat exchangers now coming to the first sub type that is double pipe heat exchanger a double pipe heat exchanger has two concentric pipes usually in the form of a u bend design double pipe heat exchangers with u bend design are known as gear bend heat exchangers the flow arrangement in this type of heat exchanger is pure counter current the usual application is for small duties and they are suitable for high pressures and temperatures next one is the shell and tube heat exchanger shell and tube heat exchangers consists of a series of tubes one set of these tubes contains the fluid that must be either heated or cooled the second fluid runs over the tubes that are being heated or cooled so that it can either provide the heat or absorb the heat required shell and tube heat exchangers are typically used for high pressure applications with pressures greater than 30 bar and temperatures greater than 260 degrees celsius this is because the shell and tube heat exchangers are robust due to their shape in these heat exchangers the performance parameters like friction coefficient pressure drop and heat transfer coefficients can be calculated by making the use of these following equations for laminar flow having a lord number Less than 2300, friction coefficient is given by the first equation, in which R is the Reynolds number. Now the pressure drop is given by the second equation, in which F is the friction coefficient, L is the length of the tube, G is the mass velocity, and rho is the density of the fluid, and D H is the hydraulic diameter. Heat transfer coefficient can be calculated from the Nusselt's number, and is given by this last equation, in which G Z is the Gregg's number. Now coming to the design part of the shell and tube heat exchanger. For design analysis, broadly there are two approaches. 
The first one is the kilo approach, and the second one is the belt level. The first approach, that is the kilo approach, attempts to correlate data of standard heat exchangers by simple equation, analogs to the equations for flow inductors. However, this method is restricted to a baffle cutoff twenty five percent and cannot adequately account for baffle to shell and tube to baffle leakage. However, although the current current approach is not particularly accurate, it does allow a very simple and rapid calculation of shell side coefficients and pressure drop to be carried out. Our second approach is the belt deliver approach. As for the belt deliver method is concerned, it includes the data for the design of the overall heat exchanger, including the tube side flow and some valves, such as leakage and bypass clearance. That are not readily available and usually must be estimated. In bell deliver method, the fluid flow in the shell is divided into a number of individual streams. Each of these streams introduces a correction factor, which is used to correct the heat transfer coefficient and pressure drop across the shell. Our next topic is related to the augmentation of the heat exchanger. The study of improved heat transfer performance is referred to as heat transfer augmentation or enhancement. In general, this means an increase in heat transfer coefficient. Basic energy balance equation for single phase convection is given by augmentation technique aims at modifying H A by improving H or A or the combination of the two. For heat transfer augmentation, techniques like passive technique, active technique, or the combination of passive and active methods are commonly used. Now, coming to the first technique. Which is the active technique? This method involves external power input for the enhancement of heat transfer. The second is the passive technique. This method does not need any external power input, and the additional power needed to enhance the heat transfer is taken from the available power in the system, which ultimately leads to a fluid pressure drop. The third technique is the combination of the FO2, and we call it as a hybrid technique. This method. Involves heat transfer enhancement by employing techniques such as adding nanoparticles to the hot or cold fluids and or by adding or using tube inserts. One of the most used techniques for increasing the heat transfer is done by employing extended surfaces known as fins. Fins are the appendages attached to the primary heat transfer surface to increase heat transfer surface area, which ultimately leads to an increase in the heat transfer on the surface. They, they are the passive devices because no auxiliary power is required. Fins are suitable for single phase convection, phase change, and radiation heat transfer. Like its extensive device design, variations can be used for planar or curved geometry, inner or outer surface, small or large heat exchangers, and may increase both surface area and heat transfer coefficient. There are various fin designs in which, which includes rectangular, triangular, annular and fin or cylinder. Our next topic is the heat pipe heat exchanger. Heat pipe is a device of very high thermal conductance. It is basically having a tubular structure. Inside the tube, there is a wick or a capillary structure which plays a major role in the flow of the working fluid, particularly for the return of the fluid to the evaporator. One end of the tube receives the heat and is known as the evaporator, while the other rejects the heat and is termed as condenser. The portion in between the condenser and the evaporator should be ideally adapted. The tubular structure of the heat pipe is basically a container which contains the working fluid. As already mentioned, inside the tube there is a wick or capillary structure which plays a major role in the flow of the working fluid, particularly for the return of the fluid to the evaporator. Now, what could be the various designs of wicks for conventional heat pipes? Heat pipe Wicks are broadly classified into three types screen type, center type, and groove type. The first type, that is the screen type, is required for complicated heat pipes. These are inexpensive in comparison to other types of heat pipe wicks and have low pressure drop and moderate capillary reaction. Next design is of center type, having high performance, moderate pressure drop, high capillary reaction, and are suitable for high acceleration applications. Last design is a blue type having high performance in low acceleration environments, that is, microgravity, such as low earth orbit, lowest pressure drop, and have lowest capillary action. Now, as you know, that there are a lot of applications why we want to transfer the heat between microchannel fluid streams. But due to the large 
size of the existing heat exchangers, it is not possible. So for those applications, we have designed microchannel heat exchanger called a micro heat exchanger. Microstructure, microstructured heat exchangers are heat exchangers in which at least one fluid flows in later confinements to critical dimensions below one end. Many features of micro heat exchanger include they handle small flow rate of fluid streams. Their vessels are small dimensions, micro channels are ever more. These are often manufactured by many micro manufacturing techniques. The vessels are of small non-circular cross sections and they are suitable for cleaning fluids. Micro heat exchangers have their application in various fields like in electronic component cooling, micro reactor, micro refrigerator air conditioning systems, micro fuel cells, medical devices, avionics, metrology and robotics. Now coming to the very important session of the discussion which is about the question answer session. Is anybody here who is having any query or doubt regarding the topic I have discussed today? Yes, you have come across falling. What can be done to prevent seawater falling related issue in seawater system based on the plate type heat exchanger? Okay. The best way to overcome the corrosion difficulty in seawater environment is using materials which are less effective in corrosion such as air and pop. But as you mentioned, our heat exchanger is plate type. The coating is a good way to help us out. In general, to work on the problems of seawater corrosion, there are serial methods such as organic coating, cathodic protection, chemical treatments, and metallic coatings, and many more. Any other point? Why there is a need of using different wicks design? Is the uh, is the there any special difference between the already discussed three design? Yes. During heat pipe operation, heat supplied by evaporator vaporizes the fluid, which travels down to the condenser. The vapor condenses in the condenser and the liquid is drawn back to the evaporator by the heat. Usually, capillary force is similar to the way the water is sucked into a sponge. The capillary forces are dependent on the pore size of the wick and the radius of the curvature of the interface, pressure drop, and the capillary action. Or we can say capillary force. The smaller the pore size, the tighter the radius of curvature and hence higher the capillary pressure that can be achieved. However, the capillary flow at a given pressure drop is highest when the pores are large. So therefore, there is a trade-off in the wick designs. Any other point? No. Okay, now coming to the reference slide. These are some references from where I have done my research work. Now coming to the end, I hope you all have enjoyed the session.